Stay with us, Lord, for it is evening. The day is almost over. Tell us again a story of dreamers, of the ways God guides us home. You, O oh Lord, are all compassion and mercy, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. Reading from the Gospel according to Matthew, beginning at chapter 2, verse 19. When Herod died, an angel of the Lord suddenly appeared in a dream to Joseph in Egypt and said, Get up, take the child and his mother, and go to the land of Israel. For those who were seeking the child's life are dead. Then Joseph got up, took the child and his mother, and went to the land of Israel. But when he heard that Archelaus was ruling over Judea, Judea in place of his father, Herod, he was afraid to go there. And after being warned in a dream, he went away to the district of Galilee. There he made his home in a town called Nazareth, so that what had been spoken through the prophet, prophets might be fulfilled. He will be called a Nazarene. Holy wisdom, holy word. Be to God. Over the past six weeks, the world has watched as a humanitarian crisis has unfolded, a humanitarian crisis of mass massive proportions, beginning with the invasion of the Ukraine. Soon about three million people had been displaced, quickly rounding up children and pets, a few essentials like IDs and passports, and fleeing for their lives toward the Ukrainian border with Poland. 2,000 Ukrainian citizens are currently at the border of Mexico and the United States in Tijuana, awaiting admission. News over these past six weeks has provided us with countless photographs of these individuals and families. Men aged 18 to 60 are prohibited from leaving the country while martial law is still in effect because they are needed for the resistance. 
So except for those under the age of 18, it's an overwhelmingly feminine exodus. We can see pictures of a woman holding her small dog in her lap at a train station. An elderly man holding the elbow of a woman supported by a cane as she waits in a long, long line at a border checkpoint. A young, exhausted mother at that same checkpoint, clasping twin babies in each arm, one in a pink winter jacket and one in a blue one. As of this week, the number of refugees has risen to nearly four million. Terrified people running for their lives, leaving a home they love, looking for safety. Our passage tonight brings us into the dreams of a refugee dad. Just about three months ago, we together heard the story of the Magi's visit with King Herod, a ruler who met the news of a newborn king with consternation and fear. At the end of that story, the Magi realized they wanted nothing to do with Herod and chose not to report back to him as he had requested, but instead to go home by another way to what we know as Iran. At the same time, Joseph, husband to Mary, new father to Jesus, had a dream, and not for the first time. There's something about the name Joseph and dreams, especially in scripture. The book of Genesis ends with the story of Joseph, favorite child of Jacob, whose dreams get him into a world of trouble with his siblings, who ultimately sell him to a passing caravan, get him out of their lives. Of course, his ability to interpret dreams ends up saving his life and getting him the promotion of a lifetime, so it all works out. Our New Testament Joseph's dreams have a different quality to them. The first dream reported in the Gospel according to Matthew is one Joseph had upon hearing his fiance Mary was pregnant and Joseph was not the father. He had been inclined to arrange for a quiet divorce. But a nighttime messenger from God, an angel of the Lord, appeared to Joseph in a dream and assured him that Mary's story was true. The child was a gift from God, and they should go ahead with the wedding. After the Magi hightailed it out of Judea, Joseph had another dream about a heavenly messenger. The angel warned him that Herod wanted to destroy the child, Jesus, and urged him to take Mary and the child and flee to Egypt, another connection with the Old Testament Joseph, who made his fortune there, rose to fame and power. But here we have, again, terrified people running for their lives, leaving a home they love, looking for safety. After Herod realized that the Magi had hightailed it out of town, he put a hit out on the young new king. But not knowing who Jesus was or where Jesus was, Herod decided to cast a wide net. He ordered his henchmen to kill all children, not even all male children. I had to double check the scripture today when I was proofing this. I said, wait a minute. Surely it's all male children. No, all children age two and under. He had killed. I think this qualifies as crimes against humanity. But now tonight, again, we find Joseph. And again, he is dreaming. We don't know how many years have gone by. But scripture tells us that the first years of Jesus' life were spent in Egypt. Traditionally, we've understood Joseph to be a carpenter, but the Greek word for his occupation, tekton, indicates that he may also have possibly worked with iron or stone. In any event, he was a skilled artisan, and we can assume that is how he provided for his family while they were strangers in a strange land. 
Like so many who have left their homelands for a better or safer life elsewhere, they raised Jesus without extended family nearby. Did they learn the local language? They must have, right? Were there other Jews nearby? Did they have adopted family in Egypt, people who felt sorry for the young couple and their newborn, sought to help them? We have only questions, really, no answers. The biblical witness tells us only this. After the death of Herod the Great, Joseph had his third and last dream, at least the last one we know of. In it, the angel of the Lord told him, get up, take the child and his mother and go to the land of Israel for those who were seeking the child's life are dead. That command sounds just as urgent as the one telling them to flee. The implication is, do this now. Why, I wonder? Were there other dangers in Egypt now? Again, a question we can't answer. But we do know this. Joseph and Mary returned to the land of Israel with their child, though not to Bethlehem where he was born. Bethlehem was ruled by Archelaus, Herod's son, who was so brutal, he was regularly called to Rome to be disciplined. Anytime a ruler in the Roman Empire is too brutal, for the people at top, you know that is a pretty bad guy. The returning family went another way. How old was Jesus now? Four, five, six? We can only guess. Did Jesus have any younger siblings yet? We know he had at least four brothers and two sisters. The Gospel of Mark tells, that, tells us that, even gives us the boys' names. I'm guessing there was at least a younger sibling or two for the return trip. The young family returned to Israel, but made their home in Nazareth, far away from Herod's awful offspring, and once again away from extended family. But it is here, in Nazareth, that Jesus grows up. It is here that he is educated in the Torah and the Psalms. It is here that he grows to be that 12-year-old boy who traveled to Jerusalem for Passover with his parents and who was separated from them and who was eventually found in the temple discussing scripture with the rabbis, listening attentively, asking questions. It is here in Nazareth that Jesus learned his father's trade and then abandoned it because he had a different call. But for now, Jesus is a young child coming home with his parents and maybe a baby brother or sister or both after a long stay in a foreign land. His father having a trade, they could have been able to live modestly but comfortably in their own home. Imagine him now. Let's say he's six years old and little Simon has come along and maybe a sister, let's call her Rachel. And the family have been in their new home for a couple of months and they've even settled into the routine of home. The last meal of the day has been eaten. The fire has been extinguished or banked for the night. Mary and Joseph see their three children into bed and maybe sing to them, certainly saying a prayer. Let's pray with them. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu menach ha'olam. Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Praised is the Lord by day and praised by night, praised when we lie down, and praised when we rise up. I place my spirit in God's care when I wake as when I sleep.
God is with me. I shall not fear body and spirit in God's keeping. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let us pray together. Let our prayers rise up before you as incense, O Lord, the lifting up of our hearts as the evening sacrifice. We give you our praise and thanks, O God, for all gifts of love we have received from you and for your persistent mercy in Jesus Christ. Especially we thank you for the grace and peace of your gentle spirit in our hearts. For all the creatures with whom we share the earth. For those whom we love and who have loved us. For the support and encouragement we receive from others. for food and drink to share in your name. We give you our cares and concerns, O God, because we know you are kind and care for your children in every circumstance. Especially we pray for the many denominations of your church throughout the world your people seeking to follow you faithfully. 
for strangers in strange lands, for all who are immigrants and refugees like Jesus and his family, for people who live in poverty, for those who are sick or suffering, for those who work for their healing, for comfort and peace for those who are dying. To you, O oh God, we give up the burdens of this day, trusting in your love and mercy. To you, O oh God, we surrender ourselves, trusting you to lead us always in the way of peace, today, tomorrow, and forever. We pray together the prayer Jesus taught us, debtors, trespassers, and sinners together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Bless the Lord. God's name be praised. May God bless us in our sleep with rest, in our dreams with vision, in our waking with a calm mind, and in our souls with the friendship of the Holy Spirit, this night and every night. Amen. <laughs> 